Now let me discuss the effect of this anticholinergic drugs on the genitourinary tract. Now if you see the effect of the anticholinergic drugs on the genitourinary tract, mainly these drugs will decrease the motility of the urinary tract. Right? So the anticholinergic drugs they will decrease the motility of the urinary tract. Right? They will decrease the motility of the urinary tract. And because they will decrease the motility of the urinary tract, what they will do? They will cause urinary retention. Right? They will cause urinary retention. That is the reason why, because these drugs, they are causing urinary retention by decreasing the motility of the urinary tract, that is the reason why this particular anticholinergic drugs they are contraindicated, right? These are contraindicated in benign prostatic hyperplasia. Because in patients with the benign prostatic hyperplasia, already there is difficulty in micturition. There is urinary retention there. Because the hypertrophied prostate will cause the compression of the prostatic urethra. Thereby, the individual will have urinary retention. So, upon this BPH, if you give this anticholinergic drugs, then the urinary retention further get precipitated. So that is the reason why these anticholinergic drugs, they are contraindicated in benign prostatic hyperplasia. Next. Next, let me tell you another important point. Now, because they are causing urinary retention, where can we use these drugs? These drugs, they are useful for the treatment of urinary incontinence. Right? In the treatment of urinary incontinence we use these particular drugs now what are those drugs which are used in the treatment of the urinary incontinences like we have dicyclamine right we have dicyclamine then you have flavoxate Right, then you have flavoxate and then you have oxybutynin. So these are the three important drugs which are used in the treatment of urinary incontinence. So in this urinary incontinence, there is detrusor instability. Right, there is detrusor instability. Okay, now, now apart from this, you take these drugs that is dicyclamine and as well as the flavoxate and as well as this oxybutynin, they are also useful in the treatment of renal colic. Right, because these drugs will relieve the spasm and thereby they are used in the treatment of the renal colic. Next. The other important drugs which are used in the treatment of the urinary incontinence is like we have some selective drugs that is selective M3 antagonistic activity is there. What are those drugs which are having selective M3 antagonistic activity used in the treatment of urinary incontinence are we have darifenacin and as well as the solifenacin. Okay. So, you take the other drugs like darifenacin and then you take solifenacin right and we have two more drugs apart from this like we have toltyrodin and as well as fesotyrodin okay so we have toltyrodin and as well as Fesotyrodin. This fesotyrodin, this is the prodrug, right? Prodrug of toltyrodin. Remember, these particular drugs, right? They have the selective M3 antagonistic activity. 
right they have selective m3 antagonistic activity and these are useful in the treatment of urinary incontinence because what does these drugs do these drugs will cause urinary retention so that is the reason why they are used in the treatment of urinary incontinence next we have a drug which is called as this particular oxybutynin the problem with the oxybutynin is this oxybutynin has maximum risk of dry mouth right this has maximum risk of dry mouth okay so oxybutynin has maximum risk of dry mouth and other anticholinergic adverse effects next we have one important anticholinergic drug which is called as trospium right another important drug which is called as trospium this trospium is a very important drug this has very minimal cns penetration why because of the quaternary amine structure right so because of quaternary amine structure this particular trospium it has very minimal cns penetration now what is the advantage of this right what is the advantage of this because this trospium has minimal cns penetration it causes lesser risk of causing impairment of cognition right so less cognition impairment okay so that is the reason why this can be used safely in elderly individuals right this can be used safely in elderly individuals next remember it is the only drug from this group that can be used with acetylcholine esterase inhibitors right what are your acetylcholine esterase inhibitors like you have reversible and as well as irreversible so this particular trospium can be used along with the acetylcholine esterase enzyme inhibitors next now you take these other drugs like you take this particular tolterodin solifenesin and as well as darifenesin these drugs they are having vesico selective m3 antagonistic activity and they have very less likely to block the m1 receptors which are present within the cns so these also can be used in elderly and cognitive impaired person so what i am trying to tell you is one very important drug which can be used in the urinary incontinence is trospium trospium has minimal cns penetration that is the reason why it will cause lesser cognitive impairment in elderly individual not only that even you take this tolterodin darifenesin and as well as solifenesin they have selective m3 antagonistic action but these drugs they have very minimal m1 antagonistic action right very minimal m1 antagonistic action that is the reason why these drugs are also safe in elderly individual right these drugs are also safe in elderly individual and as well as in those individuals with cognitive impairment is that clear next now you take this particular trospium among the entire drugs trospium is the only drug in this group that is not metabolized in the liver you take all the other drugs they are metabolized within the liver but this drug this is not metabolized in liver okay so this is one of the very very important point next because it is not metabolized in the liver this is very safe to be used along with cyp inhibitors that is cytochrome p450 system inhibitors so this can be used safely with cyp inhibitors because they are not metabolized within the liver now 
You take all these drugs. Let me tell you two important multiple choice questions here. What did I discuss about the oxybutynin? Oxybutynin is the one which will cause this dry mouth. Now, oxybutynin is the shortest acting drug, whereas the solifenacin is the longest acting drug from this particular group. Okay, solifenacin is long acting. Oxybutynin is short acting. All right, next. Now, recently there has been a new drug which has been approved for overactive bladder that is called as Mira Begron. Right, we have a new drug that is called Mira Begron. So, you take this particular Mira Begron. This is a new drug which has been approved in case of the overactive bladder right overactive bladder how does it act this particular mira begron it acts by stimulating beta 3 receptors right it acts by stimulating the beta 3 receptors all right next now you take in case of refractory cases right you are giving all these particular drugs for the treatment of the urinary incontinence right but still the urinary incontinence is undergoing in case of refractory cases of the overactive bladder we give intra bladder injection of the botulinum toxin a right so remember in refractory cases right what we do we do intra bladder injection of botulinum toxin a so this particular botulinum toxin a injection can be injected directly into the bladder in case of refractory cases of overactive bladder right so let me shortly revise what i have discussed until now the effect of the anticholinergic drugs on the genital urinary tract anticholinergic drugs will decrease the motility of the urinary tract and thereby it will cause the urinary retention that is the reason why these are contraindicated in patients with the benign prostatic hypertrophy now because they are causing urinary retention they are used in the treatment of urinary incontinence and this urinary incontinence is mainly because of the detrusor instability and uh, the drugs which are used in the treatment of the urinary incontinence are dicyclomine flavoxate and as well as the oxybutynin these drugs they are also used in the treatment of the renal colic and among all these drugs remember the oxybutynin is the one which will cause very severe dry mouth and it is a short acting drug and we have another group of drugs which are used in the treatment of the urinary incontinence they act by inhibiting selectively M3 receptors. The other drugs are darifenacin, solifenacin, toltyrodin, and as well as fesotyrodin. Fesotyrodin is a prodrug of your toltyrodin. All right. Now, out of this, you take solifenacin is a long-acting drug, right? And we have another important drug which is used in the treatment of the urinary incontinence. That is your trospium. The advantage of this particular trospium is trospium has very minimal CNS penetration. Why? Because of its quaternary amine structures. Because it has very minimal CNS penetration, this particular trospium can be used in elderly individual because it causes very less cognitive impairment. And among all the drugs, the trospium is not metabolized in the liver. That is the reason why it can be used safely with cytochrome P450 system enzyme inhibitors. The newer drug which has been approved for the treatment of the overactive bladder is Mira Begron. And this particular Mira Begron acts by stimulating the beta 3 receptors. In refractory cases, the intra bladder injection of the botulinum toxin A can be done. Now, let me tell you in case of this particular overactive bladder or in case of this particular the urinary incontinence, the first line treatment for the overactive bladder is the behavioral therapy, right? So, in case of this overactive bladder, 
remember this point the first line therapy is what behavioral therapy whereas you take your anticholinergic drugs the anticholinergic drugs in case of overactive bladder they are second line drugs the first line will be behavioral therapy and your anticholinergic drugs they are the second line treatment